dear heart is me, more than blood sister. Is there even one thing from the evils of Oedipus that Zeus doesn't inflict on the two of us still living? There is no pain or disaster, shame or dishonor that I have not seen among these evils of yours and mine. Now what is the new proclamation they say the commander has just made to the whole city? Did you hear anything? Or didn't you notice the evils from our enemies advance upon our kin? No word of our family sweet or painful has come to me, Antigone. Not since the two of us lost our two brothers, dead and one day by each other's hands. Since the Argive army left this very night, I know nothing more whether my fortune is bright or doomed. I thought so. I took you outside the courtyard gate so you alone could hear. What is it? You look like you're brooding over some news. Well, has it Creon honored one of our brothers with proper rites? While refusing the other burial, they say he buried Ateocles with true observance of justice and custom, honored below among the dead. But the wretched corpse of Polynices, they say by proclamation to the citizens that no one may bury him or cry aloud, that he be left unmourned, unburied, a sweet treasure for birds spying him to eat at their pleasure. That's what they say our good Creon has proclaimed, to you and me, yes, to me too. He comes here to proclaim once more to any who haven't heard. He's not treating this as some minor matter. Whoever should take action is sentenced to death by public stoning in the city. There you have it. You will soon reveal whether you're untrue to your noble birth or not. Poor sister, if that's how things stand, what more could I offer to do or to undo? Consider whether you will share the burden and work together. With what risk? What are you thinking of? Will your hand join mine to lift his body? What? Do you intend to bury him? Forbidden in Thebes? He's my brother. And like it or not, yours too. I will not be caught betraying him. Stubborn, even though Creon has spoken against it. He has no right to keep me from my own. Oh, and my, my sister, think how our father, hateful infamous, was destroyed by discovering his own crime, striking his eyes with his own blinding hands. Second, mother and wife, both in one, ended her life with the twisted news. Third, two brothers, dead in one day, killed their miserable selves, completing a shared doom in each other's hands. Now consider that the two of us left alone will be utterly destroyed if in violence against the law we transgress the decree and the power of the king. We need to recognize that we are women, not men to fight against men. And since we are ruled by those more powerful, we must obey them yet more painful ways. I beg those below the earth for pardon, since I am forced in this matter. I will obey the authorities. To do something so extreme makes no sense. I won't insist. Nor if you change your mind, would your assistance please me. Do as you think fit. I will bury him. And doing so, will find a noble death. Having dared a holy crime, I will lie with the one I loved and be loved. I must satisfy those below far longer than those here since I'll lie there forever. But if you think it's right, keep dishonoring what the gods honor. I do no dishonor, but it goes against my nature to act in violence against the people. You can make these excuses. I will go heap up a barrel mound for my dearest brother. Holy boy, Antigone, I am afraid for you. Don't worry about me. Set your own fate right. At least don't tell anyone what you're doing. Hide this secret and I will too. Oi, moi! Call it out! Your sons will argue far more hatred if you claim it aloud. You have a hot heart for cold matters. I know I satisfy the ones I truly must please. If you can, but you desire the impossible. Then as soon as I lose strength, I'll stop. It's not fitting to hunt the impossible in the first place. Keep talking and I'll hate you. And you'll justly lie beside your dead brother as an enemy. But let me and my ill-conceived plans suffer this dreadful fate. Nothing I will suffer could be so terrible as to keep me from a noble death. Go! If you think it's right, even though you act without sense. To your family, you truly are dear. <sighs> Shield to flood in full armor, 
you goaded by a sharper bent into headlong flight, who Polynices raised against our land in his contentious quarrel. That man, a screaming eagle soaring over the land with wings of white snow, one among the many armed warriors and crested helmets of horsehair. Hover above our rules, poised to swallow the seven gates surrounded by bloodthirsty spears before his jaws were seated on our blood. He left before the pine torch of Hephaestus, consumed our crown of towers. Clamor of Ares all around. Matched in battle, conquest by the Theban serpent. And Zeus despises boasts of an arrogant tongue. Seeing them swarm against us with his presumptuous flash of gold, he struck with his thunderbolt the one of the high ramparts, as he began his victory cry. He plunged to the solid earth ablaze, who until then raged for thoughtic madness, and exhaled blasts of most hostile gales. Things did not turn out as he had planned. And to the rest, powerful Ares, striking hard, dealt other fates. The seven captains at the seven gates, face to face with seven equals, left their bronze shields, feed to Zeus, the battle turned. All except, except the hating two, two. sprung from the same father and mother, who planted their double-edged spears through each other, together sharing a common death. Now great name's victory has come rejoicing with the ease of the many chariots. Let us forget the war. Let us go round to all the temples of the gods and dance all night and sing. And may Theban Dionysus, Earthshaker, lead the way. Now here comes the king, Creon, son of Menetheus, new ruler through recent fortunes from the gods. What plan is he piloting that he summons a special council of elders? Citizens, the affairs of state wildly shaken by the gods have steadied aright again. You, out of all the rest, I summoned here, knowing well that you always honored the power of the throne of Laius. And again, when Oedipus set aright the state, and after he perished, you still stood by his sons with sound counsel. Yet, since they were destroyed by a double destiny on a single day, striking and struck with their own stained hands, I now hold all the power and the throne by being next of kin to those destroyed. It is impossible to know the spirit, mind, and judgment of any man until he is tested in office and laws. Whoever does not pursue the best policies to steer the entire state, but locks tight his tongue out of some fear, has always, to me, seemed the worst. And whoever thinks a friend more important than the fatherland, I say he is nothing. Let all seeing Zeus be my witness. I will not watch silently as ruin, rather than deliverance, advances on this city. I could call no man friend who is an enemy of the state. And knowing that this ship keeps us safe only by sailing straight, can we determine our friends. I will make such laws to strengthen this state. Therefore, it has been proclaimed to the people related laws concerning the sons of Oedipus. Ateocles, who died fighting for this city, who bested everyone with his spear, we have buried and performed all holy rites offered to the noble dead below. But Polynices, his own brother, who returned from exile, seeking to incinerate his fatherland, who wished to consume kindred blood and lead Thebans into slavery, 
It has been proclaimed throughout the city that no one honor him with burial or mourning, what? that he be left unburied a corpse, devoured by birds and dogs, foul to see. Such is my judgment. For never in my hands will the evil surpass the just in honor. But whoever thinks well of the state, will be honored by me, dead or alive. You can do these things, son of Manesius, to the one hostile to the land and the one well disposed. You have the power, I suppose, to enact any law concerning the dead and those of us who live. Now watch over my edicts. Entrust this to someone else. No, guards already got watch the corpse. But what else would you command? Not to collaborate with those who may disobey. No one is such a fool as to love death. And that is the punishment. But greed often ruins men. My lord. I cannot say that I'm breathless from speeding here on my feet. My thoughts kept stopping me on the path, willing me to turn back. My heart had a dialogue saying, stupid, why go where you will be punished? Crazy, you dare delay again. If Creon hears it from another man, how will you not pay? My mind in turmoil, reluctance slowed the way, and thus a short journey became long. Coming into you, however, worn out at last, and if I shall say nothing, I will speak nevertheless. I come clutching the hope that I might suffer nothing beyond my own fate. What caused all this anxiety? First... I would like to tell you about myself. You see, I didn't do this deed, nor see whoever did. Therefore, why should I fall into trouble? You aim well, yet fence around the affair. Clearly, eventually, you will reveal something strange. Terrible events, as you know, call for much caution. Won't you ever tell the tale and then remove yourself? God tell you. Someone just now buried the corpse, <gasps> then left, after sprinkling thirsty <laughs> dust upon its skin and performing the sacred rites as required. What did you say? What man would dare? I don't know. No stroke of pick or hoe had disturbed the dirt. The earth was hard. It was dry, unbroken, unmarked by wheel tracks. Whoever did it left no sign. And when the morning sentry showed us, a terrible amazement overcame us all. Polynesis was hidden, not by a mound, but with a light dust, enough to avoid pollution. No sign revealed the arrival of any beast or dogs or, or tearing of his flesh. Curses flew loudly among us, guard accusing guard. It would have come to blows in the end with no one there to prevent it. To each one, someone else was the culprit. No one was obvious, and everyone denied all knowledge. We were even ready to lift red-hot iron in our hands and swear oaths to the gods not to have done the deed, nor to have any knowledge of it. At last, when nothing more was gained by searching, one man spoke, who impelled all others to bow their head, unable to contradict him. He said the deed must be reported to you and not covered up, and the lot condemns ill-fated me to undertake this great job. I come unwillingly before the unwilling, no doubt. No one loves the messenger of bad news. Um, my king, the thought keeps occurring to me whether this, perhaps, is an act of God. Stop! Before your speech fills me with rage and you'll be found foolish despite your age. What you said is intolerable. That the gods care about this corpse. Would they honor him for his good deed? Oh, my. Burying the man who came to burn down the columns of their temples and sacred offerings to scatter the land and the laws? Do you see the gods honoring the wicked? No, Impossible! No, 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 no. But from the very start, men in this city could scarcely bear these edicts and clamored against me, shaking their heads in secret. They refused to bow their necks as they should under the yoke of submission to me. I know that these men bribed the guards to commit this crime. Nothing has become such an evil currency among humans as silver. It ravages cities, banishes men from their homes, teaches and converts 
honest souls to attend shameful deeds. It shows men how to practice villainies and no impiety of every kind. But these hired hands accomplished their task, and so, in time, they will pay the penalty. As Zeus ever keeps my reverence, I swear this oath to you. If you do not find the culprit in this burial and reveal him before my eyes, Hades alone will not suffice for you until strung up you expose his arrogance so hereafter you may know where profit should come from and learn you must not love profiting from every source. From shameful gain, more men lie ruined than saved. Will you allow me to speak or shall I turn and go? Don't you know that your words irritate me? Do they sting your ears or your mind? Would you gauge the location of my pain? The culprit annoys your mind, are your ears. Oi, moi, you are clearly born a babbler. And yet I never did that deed. You did, betraying your life for silver. <laughs> How terrible for the judge to misjudge. All right, go ahead, play with judgment, but you will see how shady gain causes pain if you don't show me the culprit. And may he truly be found, whether he is caught or not, since luck decides that. No way will you see me coming back, for now, Beyond my hope and reason, I'm saved. And all the gods, many thanks. Of the many strange wonders, none is more wondrous than man. He sails across the gray sea through stormy south winds engulfed by the waves. He tills Gaia year after year, plowing with mules, tearing down eternal, inexhaustible earth, the oldest of gods. He tracks the bloody race of birds, tribes of wild beasts, and creatures from the salty sea, casting with a coiled net. Cunning man. He masters with inventions the wild animals roaming the hills, tames the shaggy horse and the untiring mountain bull, leading them under the yoke. Language and thought, quick as wind, and the temper for city laws he taught himself, and how to escape exposure to hard frost and arrows of heavy rain. Ingenious. He confronts no event without his ingenuity. From Hades alone will he make no escape, though devising refuge from incurable disease. With skillful technology, clever beyond imagination. Sometimes he inches towards evil, other times to do good. Who honors the laws of the land and the oath-bound justice of the gods is high in his city. But he has no sin if he joins the wicked and daring. May he not share my heart nor share my thoughts, whoever acts that way. What divine apparition has appeared here? How? Knowing this child Antigone? How can I claim it is not? O oh, miserable of a miserable father! Of Oedipus! No! Did they bring you here disloyal to the royal laws and caught in some foolish act? This is the one who did the deed. That we caught her! Buried that that's, 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 that's ridiculous. Where is Creon? Well, here he comes from the house just in time! What's going on? Is there good news? My lord, for mortals, nothing is sworn impossible. Second thoughts make a live intent, and I insisted I'd never come here again based on your threats hailing down on me, but although joy extends beyond the boundary of hope like no other pleasure I came, although I swore it impossible upon my oath to bring this girl who was captured, adorning the grave. The lot was not cast this time, but this is my bit of Hermes left, no others. So now, my lord, as you wish, take her, judge her, convict her, but I am free, justly released from these troubles. You caught her where? How? She was burying that man. You know all of it. Do you truly understand what you just said? Yes. We saw her bury the corpse against your orders. Aren't my words plain and clear? 
How was she seen and caught in the act? This was how it happened. When we came, threatened by you with terrible things, we swept away all the dust which covered the corpse and made the oozing body full naked. We then sat perched on a high hill upwind, fled so the stench of it not strike us. Each man busy rousing the next, should any be careless of this labor. So there we stood, until the bright orb of the sun stood in mid-heaven and the heat burned. When suddenly, a whirlwind raised up a dust storm around us, grief from heaven, filling the plain, tormenting every leaf, stuffing the vast air full. Closing our eyes, we endured the divine plague. And once it cleared, we came upon this girl. See, she wailed aloud in bitterness, like the sharp cry of a bird discovering the bed, orphaned of its nestling. So she too, when she saw, wailed in bitterness and proclaimed curses upon whoever had done it. Straightway, she bore thirsty dust in her hands and lifting high the well-hammered bronze pitcher, anointed the body with the three pour rings of libations. When we saw, we immediately rushed forward all together, hunting her down. She, not a whit frightened. When we inquired about her previous actions and those now, she stood firm, denying utterly nothing, which is both beautiful and sweet to me. To have fled from evils oneself is most painful, and to have brought friends into evil is more. But both are less important to me than my own safety. You there, hanging your head, do you admit or deny that you did this? I did it. And I do not deny it. God, go where you wish, free of this heavy charge. But you, tell me, and make it brief. Did you know that this burial was forbidden by proclamation? I knew. How could I not? It was clear. And yet you dared overstep the law. I did not hear Zeus proclaiming it. Justice who dwells with the gods below did not determine such laws for human beings. I believed your mortal proclamation had no such strength that you could override the unwritten and unchanging rules of the gods. Not just for now or yesterday, these rules of always. No one knows when they first appear. I would not risk the punishment of the gods for fear of the will of any man. I knew very well that I would die, of course, even if you had not proclaimed it. If I die before my time, I call it pure gain. Whoever lives among so many evils as I do, how can he not gain by dying? So for me to meet this fate is no grief. If I dare to leave my mother's dead son, a corpse unburied, for that I would grieve. But not for this. If to you I seem to have done a foolish thing, perhaps I'm charged with folly by a fool. <laughs> Clearly, a fierce daughter from a fierce father. She doesn't understand how to back away from trouble. <laughs> Only know that minds too stubborn fall hardest. And even the strongest iron heated extra hard by fire is shattered and crushed most surely. I know that high-spirited horses can be tamed with a small bit. She knew well how to act arrogantly when she transgressed the prescribed laws, doubly arrogant afterwards, and now she exults in it and laughs. Now, I'm no man, and she's the man if this unchecked power lies with her. Whether she is my sister's daughter or closer family than blood at our shrine to Zeus, she and her sister shall not escape a terrible fate. Yes, I charge this oh, meeting oh, equally oh, in this sense. burial. Summon her. I saw her just now raving out of her mind. The heart first reveals the criminal when it contrives a crooked plot in the shadows. And how I hate when someone caught in the act wants to pretty it up. You caught me. 
Lamartine wanted to kill me! Nothing more than I have everything. So why delay? Nothing you say gives me pleasure. May it never. And I please you just as little. Yet how could I have one glory more glorious than covering my own brother in the grave? Everyone here would agree if fear didn't lock up their tongues. But kingship is fortunate in many ways, and it can do and say what it wishes. You alone of all these Thebans see it that way. They see it too, but they shut their mouths for you. Are you not ashamed to think so differently from them? To honor those from the same womb is no shame. But wasn't the one who died on the other side also blood kin? Blood kin? From one mother and the same father! Then why offer tribute that dishonors Ateocles? The lifeless courts would not bear witness to this. Yes, if you honor him and the irreverent just the same. It was his brother who died! Trying to sack this land while the other defended it! Even so, Hades desires these traditions. But the good man shuns an equal portion with the bad. Who knows if it was sacred below? An enemy is never a friend, even when dead. My nature is not to join in Hades. But in loving, go below now and love the dead if you must love. While I live, no woman shall rule me. Here's with me by the gates, raining sisterly tears. A cloud over her brow mars her flushed face, staining her fair cheeks. You, lurking like a viper in my house secretly draining me. I did not know I fed double ruin and revolution against the throne. Tell me, do you confess to having shared in this burial, or will you swear that you know nothing? I did the deed. If she consents, I join her and bear the blame. But justice will not allow you. You weren't willing, and I didn't share the deed. In your sea of troubles, I am not afraid to make myself a shipmate in your suffering. Hades and those below witness whose deed it was. How do you not love kin or kin only in words? My sister, no! Don't deny me the honor to die with you and just sanctify our dead. Don't share my death, nor claim for yourself what you did not touch. It's enough that I die. How can life be due to me abandoned by you? Ask Creon. He's the one you care about. Why hurt me when it doesn't help you? If I mock you, I mock you only in grief. Then how may I help you still even now? Save yourself. I don't begrudge you an escape. Boy, boy, miserable me, am I to fail in your death too? You chose to live and I to die. But not with my thoughts unspoken. Your thoughts seemed right to one side, mine to the other. Yet for both of us, the fault is equal. Be brave. You live, but my soul died long ago so that I might help the dead. I tell you, one of these girls has just now shown that she's as crazy as the other and has been since birth. My king, not even an innate sense remains to those with bad fortune. Yours left when you chose to do bad deeds with her. What life is left alone for me without her? Do not speak of her. She no longer exists. Oh, you killed the bride of your own son? There are other fields to plow. Not as good a fit for him as she. I hate bad wives for sons. You're a saving. How your father dishonors you. You and that marriage cause too much grief. Will you really rob your son of her? Hades will stop the marriage for me. It is decided. It seems that she dies. Decided by both you and me. No more delays. Take them inside quickly. From now on, they must be women and no, not free no. Rome. Even the bold flee when they see Hades looming over their life. Blessed are those whose lives have not tasted evils, but for those whose house has been shaken by a god, no blight is lacking. It imbues generations as when a wave swept by a Thracian gale runs over the darkness of the depths, stirring black sand up from the sea floor, striking with a roar the wind-worn headlands. I see the sorrows of the house of Lavdicus pile on the sorrows of the dead from long ago. Each generation does not free the next. No, a god casts them down and gives no relief.
bellies. Now the bloody dust of the gods below again severs the light which the last root is spread in the house of Oedipus. All in speech and the fury of mine. What man's transgression Zeus could restrain your power? Not all subduing sleep nor the years of tiring months. Ruler, unaging in time, you dwell in the marble radiance of Olympus. In the present, future, and past, this law will endure. Nothing vast enters human life without ruin. Hope who wanders wide benefits many men, but deceives many with careless desires. It misleads the ones who know nothing until he has burned his foot in the fire. As a wise man said in the famous proverb, evil can appear good to one whose mind a god leaves to ruin. Then he has so little time without ruin. Soon we'll know more than the seers. Son, having heard the official decree for your intended bride, you haven't come to rage against your father, have you? Or are we dear to you no matter what we do? Father, I'm yours. You guide me straight when you have the best judgment, and that I will follow. To me, no marriage would be worth more than your good direction. You must always hold that in your heart and stand behind your father's judgment in every way. For that reason, men pray to have attentive sons so that, like their fathers, they may pay back an enemy with evil and honor a friend. What else could you say about a man who plants worthless children, but that he harbors labor for himself and laughter for his enemy? <laughs> yeah. Now, son, never throw out your good sense just for the pleasure of a woman, knowing that it becomes a cold embrace, an evil wife for a bedmate at home. What could be a greater ulcer than an evil spouse? Spit her out as an enemy. Let her go to Hades and marry someone. I caught her in open defiance. She alone of all citizens. I will not make myself a liar before the city. I will kill her. Let her sing about her Zeus god of kindred blood. If I nurture disorder in my own family, how much more so in others? But whoever is dutiful in his own household will also appear just in the city. And that man, I am confident, would rule well or be willing to be ruled. When posted in a storm of spears, he would remain a good and just comrade in arms. But whoever oversteps and assaults the laws or thinks to command his rulers may never win praise from me. Whoever the state appoints must be obeyed in little things, in justice, and its opposite. For there is no greater evil than anarchy. Anarchy destroys states, it overturns households, causes allied forces to erupt in flight. But when those forces succeed, it is obedience that saves many lives. Thus, one must always defend order and never be less than a woman. Better to be felled by a man, if need be, than be called weaker than women. Time hasn't deceived us. You speak, you seem to speak sensibly. Father, I believe God produced good sense in men, which is the highest of all possessions. I couldn't say. May I never be able to say that you speak amiss. Yet, alternate paths may turn out well too. 
Look, I'm in the habit of looking out for you. In everything anyone says or, or does or faults, your eye is terrifying for citizens in speaking words you don't delight in hearing. Yet I can hear things under darkness. How the city weeps for this girl. Of all women, most undeserving to perish most evilly for the most noble deeds. Her brother, fallen in bloody battle, didn't leave him unburied or to be destroyed by some flesh-eating dogs or some other birds of prey? Is she not worthy to win golden honor? Yet the dark rumor silently spreads. I have no possession more valuable than your good welfare. For what adornment is greater for children than a father's thriving glory, or for a father than his sons? Don't set one standard for yourself alone, for whatever you say is correct and nothing else. But whoever thinks that they alone contain good sense and speech or, or spirit, which no other has, when opened up, is found to be a blank tablet. No, even if a man is wise, there is no shame in learning many things and not being too rigid. By the winter swollen streams, you see which trees bend and save even their twigs. But the stiff are destroyed root and branch. For when a man in power keeps taut at a ship's riggings and yields not a bit, he overturns the ship and navigates upside down. Relax your anger. Let yourself change. If any judgment can come from me, a younger man, I say it is best by far for that man to be naturally full of all knowledge. But if not, as is nature's usual way, when someone speaks, it is good to learn. King, it is suitable for you, if he says something opportune, to learn. And you hame it from him, since well, both have spoken wisely. Hmm. Can even men of such an age be taught wisdom by a man of such an age? About nothing unjust. If I am young, one must not look at years more than facts. Respecting rebels is facts. Oh, no, no I, would, I would urge no one to respect the wicked. But wasn't she seized by just such a disease? All the people of Thebes deny it. Will the public tell me what I must command? Don't you see your talking like an adolescent. Will someone other than myself tell me how to rule this land? The public is, is not the same as one man. Is the state not considered the rulers? He would rule a desert well alone. He, it seems, is allied with the woman. Only if you are the woman. My concern is for you. By accusing your father, you scoundrel. Yes, because I see you. Erring against justice. I err against my own authority. You don't respect it. You're trampling all over the gods' honors. Foul creature, inferior to a woman. At least you won't catch me subject to something so shameful. Yet all your words are for her. And for you. And for me. And the gods below. She won't be alive for you to marry. Then she will die, and in dying you will destroy another! What does your daring proceed to threats? What threats? To speak against your empty judgments? You will regret lecturing me as you are empty of sense yourself. If you weren't my father, I'd say you lack good sense. You woman slave, don't cajole me! Do you wish to speak, but never listen? What? By Olympus! You listen here! You will not abuse me with reproaches and rejoice! Bring the hated thing so that right now, before his eyes and in his presence, she may die beside her bridegroom! No! Not in front of me! Never be that! She will not be killed beside me, and he will never set eyes on my face again! Rave on! Live with whatever kin you are still willing! Sun King, stand out in anger. A young heart grieves hard. Let him go. Let him act more arrogant than he should. He will not save these women from their fate. Do you really intend on killing both of them? No. Not the one who didn't touch him. You speak wisely. How do you plan on killing the other one? What is her fate? by taking her to a deserted path 
away from the people and there, placing her in a rocky cavern, setting out enough food to avoid a curse so that Thebes escapes all blame, and there, praying to Hades, the only god that she reveres, perhaps she won't happen to die. At least she will learn that it is a waste of labor to revere Hades. Invincible in battle, passion who ravishes wealth, you stay the night on the soft cheeks of a girl, and roam the open sea and through meadowland homes. None of the immortal gods, and no ephemeral human can escape you. Whoever has you is mad. You warp the minds of the just to do injustice for their own ruin. You even stirred up this bloody quarrel among kinsmen. Radiant desire in the eyes of the bride, ready to bet for veils, and shares authority with the great laws, since the goddess Aphrodite plays them unbeatable. Now I am beyond laws at this sight. I can no longer hold back the stream of tears as I see Antigone nearing the bridal chamber that gives rest to all. Tantalos's daughter, high on the mountain, where a growth of stone like clinging ivy subdued her. They say that rain and snow never leave Niobe as she wastes away. And below every weeping lids, her rocky sides stream. Just like her, a god puts me to rest. No, she is immortal and born of God, while we are mortals and born to die. Yet it is a great thing to hear when you die that you shared a portion with the god life while alive and then after death. You mock me. By our father's gods, why do you insult me before I'm gone? Well, I'm still clearly in sight. Oh, city, and the city's prosperous men. Oh, streams of thirsty and sacred plain of thieves of the many chariots. At least I want you to witness how I'm sent by such laws to the rock enclosed prison of this strange tomb, unmourned by my family, miserable and with no home among the living or the dead. I'm not alive, nor have I died. Pressing on the limits of daring. Child, you crashed hard against the high throne of justice. You are paying for trouble from your father. You touch my most painful thoughts. A lament plowed over and over for my father and for the whole destiny of us all in the famous line of Lanticus. Oh, the blight of the maternal bed and the incestuous coupling of my father and his ill-fated mother. From what parents was my miserable self born? I am returning to them, cursed and unwed to share their home. Brother, you met with an ill-fated marriage, and by your death you kill me while I'm still alive. Showing reverence is pious, no doubt. But power to those in power is in no way to be trampled on. Your self-generated temper destroyed you! No laments, no family. I am led on this road without delay. No longer may I in misery see the sacred eye of the sun. No one weeps for my destiny. None of my kin grieves aloud. Oh. <laughs> Don't you know that no one would ever 
never stop singing and moaning before dying if it gained them time. Take her quickly, and when you have enclosed her, as I said, in that vaulted tomb, abandon her alone, deserted, whether she wishes to die or live entombed in such a shelter, for we are pure concerning this girl. In any case, she will be deprived of a home above. O oh, tomb, O oh, bridal chamber, deep eternal curse where I walked toward my own kin, most of whom I perished, and Persephone has welcomed among the dead. Oh, 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 Last of them! Stop her! Worst off my farm! Oh, stop her! I will descend before reaching my fortune! Oh, I will do anything! I did leave nurse the hope! Oh, when I arrived! Oh, 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 dear to you, mother! And dear to you, my darling brother! When you all died with my own hands, over your graves I poured libations! Now, Polynices, laying out your body, this is what I earn! Yet to sensible people, I did well to honor you. I would never, if I had been the mother of children, or if my husband had been dead, and writing have chosen such labor and fight <laughs> against the people. According to what custom do I say this? A husband dead, there will be another for me, and a child from another man if I lost one. But since my mother and father lie hidden in Hades, no new brother could ever be born. Well, I deeply honored you according to such custom. I sing to Creon to do wrong and to dare terrible things, my darling brother. Now he seizes my hand and takes me away with no marriage bed, no wedding song, not destined to marry or nurture children, but deserted by loved ones and ill-fated alive. I am to the king of the dead. What divine law have I transgressed? Why should I, O fated, still look to the gods? What ally can I invoke? When I acted piously, I was called impious. If to the gods, this truly is good. Through suffering, I will know I erred. But if these men err, may they suffer no more evil than they do unjustly to me. No! 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 She's crazy! She's mad! Stop I do not at all encourage taking to heart that these plans will not be executed. Oh, Theban land, city of my father and ancestral gods, I am led away and delayed no longer. Behold, leaders of Thebes, the only woman left in the royal line. See what I suffer from such men. Because I acted with reverence. Oh, oh, oh. heaven's light for a chamber bound in bronze. She was hidden away, imprisoned in a tomb-like tower. Yet, dear child, honored for her ancestry, she was the depository for Zeus's shower of golden seed. But destiny, whatever it may be, is a strange, awful power. Neither wealth nor Ares, a tower nor dark ships beaten by the sea, may escape. The hot-headed Edonian king, son of Dryas, was bound by Dionysus for his mocking temper and confined in a rocky prison. There the awful, blooming strength of his madness ebbed away. That man finally recognized the god he assaulted with mad, taunting tongue when he tried to stop the god-possessed women in the Bacchic fire and enraged the pipe-playing muses. Near the dark waters of the dark islands of the Double Sea, the coasts of Bosporus, and Thracian Solmodeshus, where the neighboring god Ares 
witnessed the cursed wounds blinding Phineas's two sons. His savage second wife blinded them, their eye sockets crying for vengeance, gouged by her bloody hands and shuttle points. Wasting away in misery, the suffering pair wept in agony, sons born of a badly wed mother. She descended from an ancient line, grandchild of Erechtheus, daughter of Boreas. She was raised in distant caves with her father's storm winds, like a horse swinging over steep crags, child of gods. But even over her, immortal destiny prevailed, my child. I never resisted your prophecy before. And thus, you steered the state on a straight course. I can testify to having experienced your aid. Consider that you once again walk on the razor edge of fortune. <laughs> what? How your words make me shudder. You will know once you hear the omens of my art. As I took my place at the ancient seat of Argory, where I have a sanctuary for every bird, I heard an unfamiliar cry of birds, screeching with evil and barbaric frenzy. They were tearing each other bloody with their talons. The whirring of wings spoke clearly. Out of fear, I attempted to burn sacrifices, but the flames of Hephaestus would not flare up at the offerings. Thighs melted oozing juices onto the embers, smoking and sizzling. Gallbladders burst high in the air. Thigh pieces dripped bare of their covering fat. Such failed prophecies from unreadable sacrifices. Now, the state suffers this disease due to your counsel. Sacrificial hearts, one and all, birds and dogs, fill with meat from an ill-fated fallen son of Oedipus. The gods no longer accept sacrificial prayers or burnt offerings from us. For what bird cries forth clear signs when gorged on the rich blood of a slain man? Think on these things, child. For all humans to err is common, but when a man has erred and fallen into evil, he must not remain foolish and unlucky. If he seeks remedy, and is not inflexible. Willfulness incurs a change in stupidity. Give in to the dead. Do not prod a corpse. What valor in killing the dead again? I give good advice with good will to you. Learning is sweetest when the advice is spoken for your gain. Old one, everyone shoots arrows at me like archers at a target. I have suffered your prophetic arts. The tribe of seers traded and delivered me long ago. Make a profit, bartering electrum from Sardis or Indian gold. But you will not put that man in the ground, not even if Zeus's eagles wish to seize his meat and bear it to Zeus's own throne, not even out of fear of that pollution will I allow anyone to bury that man. For I know that no human can defile gods. But, old Tiresias, even very clever people fall shamefully when they utter shameful words well for the sake of gain. Pa! Does anyone know? Have you even considered what? that? What? What commonplace do you speak? That the most powerful possession is good counsel. Just as I believe lack of judgment causes the most harm. Yet you always were full of that disease. I do not wish to speak foully against a prophet. And yet you do, saying that I foretold falsely. Since all prophets love silver. And all tyrants love shameful prophets. Do you understand that you were talking about your commander? I understand, since you saved the city through me. 
You are a skillful prophet, but you love to do wrong. You will entice me into revealing things undeclared in my mind. Reveal them. Only don't speak for profit. Have I seen that way so far? No, you cannot barter my will. Listen carefully now. You will not complete many racing courses of the sun before you give up a corpse from your own loins in exchange for corpses. For you have cast one below who belongs above, making a living soul dishonorably dwell in a tomb, while you keep a corpse belonging to the gods below, without due portion, without burial rites, without holiness. You have no right to the dead, nor to the gods above, yet you violate them even now. And hence, the Furies, Avengers of Hades, and the gods lie in ambush for you, hoping that you will succumb to the same evils. Consider whether my speech is covered in silver. For a brief passage of time will reveal the wailing of men and women in your household. All the enemy states whose mangled corpses were given burial rites by beasts or wild dogs or some winged bird bringing their stench into the city horse. Since you taunt me, I have shot like an archer such short arrows to the heart in anger that you cannot outrun their heat! Lead us out. He can shoot his temper at a younger man and learn to nurture a calmer tongue and better attitude than he has now. King, that seer left with terrible prophecies, and we know truly that they have never once spoken falsely against the state. Yes. I know, and my mind is in turmoil. To give in is terrible, but to ruin my soul with resisting is also terrible. One must take good counsel, child of Menesius. What must I do? Tell me, and I will obey. Take the girl up from her rocky cave and make a grave for the one lying dead. This is your counsel that it seems best to give in. As quickly as possible, Lord, for swift-footed harm from the gods cut short full. Oh, boy, it's hard, but I withdraw from doing what my heart resolves. One must not fight vainly against necessity. Do this now, go, do not leave it to others. I will go, just as I am. Guards, come, one and all, go, with axes in hand to that place within sight. I myself, as my opinion is reversed, since I bound her, I personally will release her, for I fear it is best to complete one's life preserving the established customs. Lucky and the unlucky. 
No one can predict the present. Creon was to be envied, it seemed to me, when he saved this Theban land from its enemies, took on the country's monarchic rule, and steered it straight, thriving with noble children. But now all has been lost. For whenever a man's pleasure deserts him, I don't consider him alive, but a living corpse. Fill the house with great wealth if you wish, and live like a tyrant, but without joy, I wouldn't pay a shadow of smoke for that life without pleasure. What is your painful news about the king? They are dead. What? what? And the living guilty of their deaths. Who is the murderer? Who lies dead? Speak. Haman <laughs> perished. Bloodied by a royal hand. His father's his own hand. His own, in anger at his father for murder. Oh, prophet, your words were proven right after all. That being so, it is time to take counsel. Oh, I see unhappy Eurydice, Creon's wife, coming out of the house by chance, or perhaps because she heard about her son. People of town. I heard your words as I was heading outside to invoke Pallas Athena in prayer. I was unlocking the bolts from the gates when the utterance of evil upon my house struck my ears. I fell back in fear near my maidservants and fainted. But whatever the tale was, tell it again. For not untested in evil events, I will listen. Since I was there, dear mistress, I will speak and not omit a word of truth. Why should I try to soothe you when later I would be exposed to life? Truth is an ever straight course. I was attending your husband as a guide on the highest part of the plain where Polynices, unpitied dog-mangled body still lay. After praying to the crossroad goddess and Pluton to gentle their tempers, we gave him the ritual bath, gathered and burned what was left of him on newly cut branches, and heaped up a high tomb of his native earth. Then we walked to the girl's rock-paved bridal chamber, the Cave of Hades. From afar, someone heard shrill wellings near the unhallowed entry and reported to Master Creon. As he crept nearer, an incoherent cry of misery surrounded him. He cried out, Oh, misery, am I a prophet? Am I to crawl the most unfortunate path of all roads traveled? The voice of my son greets me. Servants, hurry, standing near the tomb. Look closely and enter the cave where stones have been torn out to its mouth. Is it Haman's voice or am I deluded by the gods? As our dispirited master commanded, we did look closely. Far back in the tomb, we saw Antigone hanging by her neck, <gasps> suspended by a woven noose of linen, embracing her waist. He pressed against her, bemoaning the destruction of his marriage bed lost below, his father's deeds, and unhappy bride. Creon, seeing him groaned in despair, wailing loudly, Oh, reckless one, what have you done? What were you thinking? What misfortune deranged you? Come out, child, I beg you. With wild eyes, his son stared at him, spinning in his face, and answered nothing. He drew his double-edged sword, but as his father rushed out in flight, he missed. Ill-fated, angry at himself, he suddenly tensed and thrust the sword deep <laughs> into his own side. Oh. Barely conscious, he embraced the girl in his limp arms. Panting, he spurted quick streams of blood upon her cheek. He lies corpse upon corpse, receiving marriage rights at last, poor man in Hades' house. Revealing to humankind how ill counsel is by far the greatest evil for man. saying a word, good or bad? I am amazed, but I am nourished by the hope that the news of her child's suffering won't lead to public mourning, but under her own roof, inside with her servants. 
She'll begin lamenting the family sorrow. She is not untested in judgment and not so likely to err. I don't know. To me, weeping and wailing is just as ominous as silence. We will know whether she hides something quietly held back in her raging heart once I enter the house. But you are right. Too much silence is ominous. Now here comes the king holding a clear memorial, if it is right to say, to the ruin of his own, no others. Oh, deadly stubbornness, the mistake of a foolish mind. Behold the kindred killers and the kindred dead by my unlucky decision. Oh, my child, so new to life. No to death, you die, not sent from life by your own hand, but by my unlucky bad counsel. Why, boy, it seems you see justice too late. Why, boy, I've learned, miserable me, some god had struck me on the head, and then with full weight hurled me on savage paths, trampling, toppling joy. My voice, damn the pains of mortals. Oh, hush, pains. My king, you seem to come bearing evils and have more in store, those in your hands and those in the house you will soon see. What evils? Could be worse than even these evils. Your wife, <laughs> true mother of your son, is dead, unhappy man, just now by freshly inflicted blows. <laughs> Haven of Hades, hard to cleanse. Why me? Why do you destroy me? What tale do you tell, you who bring the sorrow of evil tidings? You destroy a ruined man anew. What are you telling me? See what new slaughter heaped on his dead. My wife's corpse. My boy. I see the second evil. Misery. What fate. What still awaits me just now. I held in my hands my child, and now I see my wife facing me dead. Oh, poor mother, <coughs> oh, my poor child. <laughs> Over a keen-edged sword at the altar, she released her eyes to darkness, <clears throat> mourning her marriage empty first of dead Megarius, and now Haman. Finally, she cursed your evil actions as child murderer. My Lord, I tremble with dread. Why does no one strike me with a double-edged sword? I am miserable, dissolved in misery. Before she died, she denounced you as responsible for the doom of both. Sons, how could she destroy herself in cold blood? By striking under her liver with her own hand when she heard of the news of her child's keen suffering. My responsibility for this shall never belong to another mortal. I alone killed you. Oh, unhappy me. I speak the truth, miserable. Come, come, servants, take me. Take me quickly. I am less than nothing. Your advice is profitable, if there's any profit among evils. For briefness is best with peoples about. Oh, hurry, hurry. Let the loveliest doom appear for me now, bringing my last day. By far my best, let it come when I never see another day. In time, other powers will take care of such things. Now you must care for what lies in front of you. But my prayers 
spoke my desire. Then don't pray now. Deliverance from destined calamity is impossible for mortals. Oh, take a worthless man away. My child, I did not mean to kill you, nor you, my wife. I don't know which to look at, what to lean on. Oh, in my hands is a skew. In all else, unbearable fate is crashed on my head. Oh, my far good sense is the first principle of happiness. One must not disrespect what belongs to 